cycles are naturally, you naturally have an expanding cycle and a retraction cycle. The Fed has artificially kept us from having big, big recessions or any recession really. Because as soon as, I mean, you look at COVID, they came in with gangbuster money and it's not healthy, right? It's yeah. cycles like the, the seasons you go through every season, every year you kind of have this natural thing to it. And when you don't allow that to happen, it builds up this this kind of pressure that eventually has to give way. And we kind of saw yeah. that in 2008, 2009 with the mortgage crisis and everything that happened there. And I do think we have to go through that again. So, I mean, basically we were sticking in this, in this range, you kind of came up here, you came down, you bounced, you kind of hammered on this lower level it held. And then it looked so optimistic just a few days ago when we surged above this line, we closed above, we got this pause candle right here, and then it just gave it all back yesterday and kind of put us back in this channel. So, so I'm still slightly very near term bullish on, on Bitcoin. I, I do think that there's too many bears out there right now. There's a tendency when, when any sort of asset gets too many bears, price action will go in the opposite direction until that mitigates a little bit. Um, and also the charts continue to hold this lower level. So you have a level at 28,700 right here. And then this lower channel line, which is just such a depressive channel. You can see it hit here, it hit here, and then it pierced here on that UST panic, the yeah. uh, Terra Luna debacle, and it held. So that's really your line in the sand. Like for me, I'm long Bitcoin here. Um, I only about a 12% position in my portfolio, so it's not a lot. But again, I'm going to stick with that because as long as we hold this down sloping trend line, mm -hmm. that's kind of the line in the sand. If that okay. gives way, then that would be something where I would be, I'd, I'd start to think we're going to 20,000 if that gives way. As long as it holds, I'm, I'm rolling the dice and I think you get an up move to maybe 34 and a half, 35, maybe 38,000. Um, Midterm, I'm still bearish. You know, okay. it's, we haven't seen the washout that needs to happen yet in crypto. We started to see it with Terra Luna and UST, but it's got to be more. It's got to happen to more more points. Out. You've got to close above, which is like step one. So so breakouts are three step processes. And what you're really looking for is you don't want to get caught with an institutional game. And, and institutions love this type of play where they'll take a chart above a level and then get everyone to jump in thinking it's a breakout, right? So think about how many Bitcoiners saw this, right? And they, they were like, oh, it broke out and they jump long. And then it's like pause, candle, reversal, take their money and say, thank you very much. So what I like to do is I use what's called the confirmation signal. And what that is, is basically, this was your first close above that line. Yeah. I need to see a close above the high of that candle, which will then confirm it, right? So the high of that candle is right there. I look for kind of what would be called a confirmation candle breakout. What I found is that institutions are only going to commit so much money to reversing the move. And the longer it stays and the higher it goes, it's going to attract more money on the long side. They can only fight the battle with a limited amount of money, right? They're not going to put themselves in a position to lose a billion dollars to make a hundred million. So, so usually if you get that close above, now you have a legitimate breakout. Now it's off to the races. We didn't get that. And we got that spinning top, just like you said. And then unfortunately a reversal built quick. I was disappointed because I was still hoping like, okay, well, sideways candle, sideways candle, maybe you start making a bull flag and then can break up. And it just, I mean, it just kind of ripped our hearts out in that respect. In my trading career, I've found that it always takes longer to get there than everyone thinks, right? So if you go back to like in 2005, 2006, we could all recognize the housing bubble the financial kind of craziness that was going on, but it really took till 2008 to, to collapse. Um, yeah. Same thing in the 90s, right? Alan Greenspan called the, the tech bubble then irrational exuberance in 1995, and the tech bubble didn't top out till 2000. So he was five years early, and that, earlier, and that was the Fed chairman at the time, mm -hmm. right? So, so I think it's important to recognize that the Fed is definitely going to be tied a little bit. They can't print the same amount of money with inflation where it is. Um, I think that's becoming more and more unpopular now that people are feeling the effects of, of price hikes and gasoline and all these other things that, that they're having to pay for. Um, but at the same time, they still will have some methods to to stimulate, whether it's through foreign markets or other, other means. So I do think we will get to a point where we have you know some sort of depression. And one thing that's interesting is you always hear that every generation has to experience like a great depression, right? And if you think about it, the last one was in the late 20s, early 30s. 
there's not a lot of people anymore that are that have experienced a real great depression and so yeah. we're kind of setting up for that the other thing that's kind of interesting is you do have the hundred year cycle which is a pretty powerful cycle uh interestingly enough you had the spanish flu right in the in the kind of the eight, uh, 1918 ish area and then in 20 2018 really 2019 we started to get into COVID in 2020 well 2020 more so but but the point is again that's the 100 year cycle and you had a virus right that really decimated the world back then and yeah. did so this time as well so it makes sense that I would say if we're looking at the Great Depression ish type thing probably late this decade maybe in the late 20s again and it might coincide with that 100 year cycle but I don't see how it's avoidable Right, you, you have this constant kind of keeping the patient alive by fake means, right? Just giving them mm. injections or whatever. And that's the economy I'm talking about from the Federal Reserve and the government. And eventually the patient just heals over, right? I mean, they can't, they can only live so long before yeah. you have to that flush out. Even in the great, you know, the, the COVID collapse in the markets, it came back so fast that mm -hmm. it gave people that false sense of security where it's like, oh, well, if it drops 30%, it'll be back up to the highs in a month. So who cares, you know, like, and that's not the way bear markets work. Bear markets, at least in the stock market, will last years, um, and and that's more normal. And it will just eat away at you. I mean, when you see your account day after day down 30, 40, 50, 60 percent, and it happens it's that way for years, it, it gets depressing to the point where people do throw in the towel and kind of just say, "All right, I've had enough." So um, you know, just be careful. You know, I think that's the bottom line: is that you should only be trading with money that you can afford to lose. And and if you have a long term view, then then at least you can say, "Okay, I have a long term view." but then you can't get whipped out at the lows. I do think that eventually the crypto market, at least specific cryptos like Ethereum and Bitcoin, become a safe haven. Um, they just have to get to a realistic price where, where big money really starts to think of them like that. And I think you're starting to see that a little, but you're not quite there yet. But I, I do think that a lot of the cryptos out there, you know, anything past the top 30 maybe, I mean, there's a question of why, why are they needed? What are they needed for? Are they, is it a valid reason that they should survive? Um, and, and yeah, I think, I think that's what's going to come out of it is that some of them won't or a lot of them won't. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think that the crypto market will eventually mature into a gold type market um, of safety, offsetting the dollar printing and all that stuff.